Hi, my name is Scott, the Miniature Maniac. Hey, that ain't Maniac! This is fake news! Alright, you got me. Guilty. This isn't Scott. This is John, the Figure Fanatic. What up, Mini Family? So by now, you're probably asking yourself, Self? Where's my beloved Scott? And why am I stuck with this cheap American knockoff? I'm glad you asked. You see, Scott got himself in a bit of a bind, uh, doing his best Adam Savage impression, spending over 540 hours with the GD coffee table. And so in order to get that primo content out to you guys, he asked my assistance. Oh, John, you have to save me. I need someone to get my video release schedule back on track, and only someone as talented, hardworking, creative, boyishly handsome, and modest as you can possibly accomplish such an arduous task. All right, I'll do it. Well, before we accomplish John's wet dream, we need to first pay some bills. The case is at the end of the tunnel. Do you see it? I think so. Is it made out of beautifully stained wood? Yes, that's it. You found it. It also has a really cool YouTuber's logo laser engraved on it. Well, that's debatable. Well, you can get whatever you want laser engraved on it. You'd want something like Chad Kroger's face, no doubt. Not now. What else can I find inside? It has a bunch of laser CNC compartments, perfect for holding all your bits and bobs, such as a tray with individual miniature holders, shelves for completed and work-in-progress minis, and a box for self-defense weapons. Hey, what are you doing in here? That must be in here. Don't you think me extracting your own personal miniature painting case is a little bit below my pay grade? Nonsense. I think it's priceless. Hey, where are you going with that? Stop! <laughs> And also, apparently bulletproof. Whether you're going to a con, your local game store, or a friend's house, the Frontier Wargaming paint case has got you covered. This case is made of premium quality Baltic birch plywood with a glossy, stained finish. And it features three paint racks that can hold up to 96 Vallejo or 54 Citadel paints, five bits and supply boxes, one box for your brushes and tools, a tray with six miniature holders, removable bright LED lighting, and an adjustable shoulder strap. You can find a link to the paint case in the description below. Thanks for sponsoring this video of Frontier Wargaming and also thank you for going along with this somewhat crazy idea. <laughs> okay, back to the video. So we've all been there. New to the mini painting hobby and overwhelmed by all of the decisions required. Oftentimes, one of the first decisions revolves around paint. Which brand to use? Which colors? It can be overwhelming and oftentimes is a big barrier to our entry to the hobby. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take five of the top heavyweights in the mini painting realm. We're going to put them in a no-holds-barred steel cage match. Who's going to come out victorious? Brother. Before we get started, there are a few things I want to mention. As the title of this video suggests, we're comparing paint sets, not paint ranges. And to distinguish the difference, a paint set is something that has been prepackaged by the manufacturer for you to purchase and consume as a starter. That said, there are many things to learn from this experience, even if you're not a beginner. Maybe you're looking to add new tools to your toolbox. Maybe you want to test out a range you've never heard of before. Or maybe you're just a little bit scale color curious. Regardless, there are good points to be learned here. And in fact, towards the end of the video, I'm going to share something that surprised me and is really, I feel, made me a better mini painter. I used two experiments to run these paints through the gauntlet. First, I painted a sexy cultist in just a few hours using the speed paint system described in this video. Chapow. That jam, there needs to be charts. And two, Scott asked that I create a chart to compare the primary colors on an opacity test. For consistency's sake, I kept three things the same across all tests. First, I used the same synthetic cheap brush from a hobby store for every mini. Second, the only shade or wash that I used for every mini was Army Painter's Strong Tone. Some of these sets include a shade and wash and some don't, and that's really not an apples to oranges comparison. So for this, we all use the same wash. And finally, 
I brought the same viscosity across every paint when testing for opacity. You may notice that we didn't test P3 in this comparison. And believe me, I wanted to. See, Privateer Press puts together sets based on factions in their games, and they have a nice cohesion to them, but they don't have a nice full range of colors. So for this test, I wanted to bring a couple of those sets together and test them, although I came to a problem. Most of those sets were all sold out online, so I couldn't pull together a full range of P3 paints that I felt would give us an apples to apples comparison for this video. Come on, Dallas. Oh, and if you like the look of these sexy evil cultists, they can be yours. Stay to the end of the video and find out how you can win them. First up is the Games Workshop Citadel's Essential Kit for Age of Sigmar. Comes in at 33 bucks and you get 13 pots of paint as well as some fancy tools like a brush, a clippers, and some plastic glue. But you know, we have all seen the fancy GW clippers and brushes that they're way overpriced. These aren't those versions. These are some kind of crappy knockoffs. Um, and you may say to yourself, 13 pots of GW paint for 33 bucks, hells to the yeah. And you'd be wrong because these are three milliliter bottles. That's right, three. The average paint is 15. Vallejo is 17 mils, and the GW standard paint pot is 12 mils. So you are getting one quarter of a pot for each of these in here. Womp, wow. In terms of flow and opacity, uh, GW brought their A game on this front. Their paints are high in pigment, and they show really well in our testing. Um, they didn't skimp when it comes to the quality of making it in that regard. Where I do struggle to agree with some of the decisions is, is on ease of use. First of all, in this set, none of the paint pots actually have the name of the paint on the outside of them. How dumb is that? Next, we're talking about pots, right? And this conversation is as old as time itself when it comes to mini painting pots versus dropper bottles. And I'm gonna say as a new painter, if I feel I can go from pot to mini and not thin my paints, that's what I should be doing. And I'm gonna get frustrated as a new painter. Not cool. For thickness of paint strictly out of the pot, it's all over the place. Um, some of the paints are relatively thin, I would call a medium thickness, and some are, no kidding, like cement. For instance, look at this white. Yeah, that's not doctored. That's what the pot looks like. When it comes to the finish of this paint, and that would be how dull to glossy it is, um, GW was the shiniest that I tested. It, I would call it a mid-range satin, and sometimes, that's fine, but specifically, if you look at the blue pants of my mini, I have highlights there, but because that paint is so shiny, it's hard to determine what are the highlights and what's just from the light from your room. For range of colors, uh, there's no green in this set, which is kind of a, a bummer, but it's not the end of the world, but there's two browns, why? And also one of the pots of paint is actually a texture paint. And again, leading back to no names on the bottles, you could be putting the crackle paint on your dude's shoulder pads and not realize it until the paint's dry. Not exactly good. I will say that their reds and yellows are very, very strong. So final recommendation. Um, you're getting very low milliliters per dollar on this set, um, as well as you have a bunch of extra tools that come with it that you can get higher quality elsewhere for a lot cheaper. And it does come with two shades, but they're a skin tone and a blue. And they don't give you a brown shade, a dark shade, the Agrax Earth shade, which is what they should have freaking given you. And I'm not saying don't buy GW. I own a lot of GW, but don't buy this set. Just a fast announcement in the spirit of Black Friday, I am selling two new t-shirts on my store. One is this metal album style t-shirt and the other is just a normal one with my logo on it. And I know you're thinking, is there cheap shipping to international countries? And this time there is. So go check it out, pick up a shirt. In addition to that, all the old products on my site, the cutting mat, the patch and the coffee mug are all 20% off and they also have cheaper shipping as well. So go check it out, Miniac dot bigcartel.com. Okay, back to the video. So next up is the Army Painter War Games Hobby Starter Set for $30 renews. Now in this set, you get a brush and it's a sable brush, surprisingly, but it's freaking tiny. Like if you wanna have a 45 minute eye patch to paint, 
you go ahead and use that brush. It also comes with nine paints plus the Army Painter Strong Tone. I know, hold your applause. And it also comes with this cool little handout, a pamphlet really, about starting mini painting with some step-by-step -step pictures in it. And honestly, that would be really nice. When I was starting, I would feel like I was gaining confidence by following the steps there. So Army Painter's off to a good start. And that's when we hit flow and opacity. From a flow standpoint, um, I really struggled to have this paint go smoothly across the surface of the mini. Sure, it was doable, but I felt like I was fighting an uphill battle compared to other brands. In terms of opacity, um, it actually gives pretty good coverage at a layer consistency. Um, but when it's thinned down, it loses its vibrancy very quickly and the paint tends to separate pretty quickly as well. So for the finish of this paint, I would call it a low satin, meaning that it's not super shiny, but it's also not super matte. I'd say it's industry standard. Good job, solid. Thickness. Uh, so for the thickness of this paint, by and large, it'll come out of the tube um, moderately thick, not super thick, but moderately thick, which is good. So you could use it for techniques like wet blending, tube brush blending, even feathering down. Um, but it thins down to a layer consistency pretty well. You wanna go further than that though, you're gonna get into some trouble. So like I said, this set comes with nine paints plus Army Painter's Strong Tone. Um, it doesn't have gold, it doesn't have purple, it doesn't have orange. So those are missing and especially as a new painter, you just need an orange, you don't wanna mix the yellow and red, I get that. Um, so we're missing some stuff there. So my final recommendation for Army Painter is that it's a great all-in-one box set. You get the brush, you get the strong tone, but the quality of the paint honestly left a little something to be desired. I felt like I was fighting it more than I should have. So, mm. Next up is the Vallejo Basic USA Model Color Paint Set. I love you, Ben Cummins. Why do you name your product something so boring? Please, Vallejo, you're killing me. Your white and black labels are one thing. Your green boxing is another, but name your product something that actually says, yeah, I wanna paint today. So this set costs 40 bucks. Yeah, it's kind of spendy, but in it you get 16 bottles of paint. Really, for price per milliliter, it is the best value that we're testing today. And the wide range of colors are impressive. You get metallics, including a super strong silver, a super strong gold. You get every primary and secondary color and a couple of browns in there just for funsies. In terms of flow, um, it's fairly thick coming out of the bottle, which is a good thing. You wanna be able to do wet blending, two brush blending, loaded brush with this kind of paint, and it does it well. It also thins down incredibly well, even down to use for glazing. So everywhere in between, it does a solid job. So the finish of this paint is on the edge between satin and matte. Um, it's pretty strong in that regard. Uh, I didn't have any issues. A lot of painters use this paint and it doesn't cause a lot of reflections. So solid. There's two colors in here that are kind of weird though. First of one is called Azure, which is kind of a really light bluish purple, which is an odd thing in a starter set. It's kind of a niche color. And then there's a color called Buff. Now, Buff isn't exactly a skin tone and it isn't exactly a tan. So I can only assume it has one purpose. Uh. Final recommendation, you can't go wrong buying this box of paint. The best thing that I can say about this paint is that it will grow with you. So as you improve as a painter, this paint won't be holding you back. And next up is Reaper, who brings in the Reaper Master Series Starter Set. For a mere 35 bucks, you get a sweet ass case. Oh yeah, and there's paint in it as well. All right, within the case are 13 paints, 15 milliliters each. The, here's the weird thing. There are three different types of paints. There's the core colors, the HD maximum coverage colors, and the Bones ultra colors. We're gonna break those down in a little bit. So for this paint set, in terms of ease of use, most of the paints right out of the bottle come what I call pre-thinned. Like the formula of the paint was set that you drop them out and boom, you have instant base coat. And for a new painter, that is awesome. Until you hit the HD paints in this set. They are thicker 
They use some weird hybrid gel medium. It's not like the gel medium from War Colors or Scale 75, but it's closer to that than standard mediums. And they're thicker, which is fine, but they don't thin down and they don't cover at all. Now, the yellow HD color was bad, like really, really bad, but yellows tend to struggle historically for all paint ranges. But my problem was with the green. Green is a color that typically covers very, very well. Now, with their green in this set, if you see this portion of my cultist here with the green, I stopped counting at 18 coats to get that coverage, and I can still see through it in some points. So in terms of flow, overall, it's incredibly good in this paint, again, until you hit the HD paints. Same with opacity. It actually is really strong, especially considered how thin the paint comes out of the bottle. Again, they manufactured this paint to be optimal at this thickness, which happens to be your average layering thickness. So really, really strong there. Again, when they tried to reinvent the wheel and create this gel medium HD paint, there were some big, big issues. In terms of finish, the paint finish is strong. I would say it's a mid satin slash matte, kind of industry standard. This is a good thing. Nothing really to remark about there. In terms of thickness of the paint, I talked about the benefits of this thin paint, especially for a beginner or just wanting to knock out some base coats. But there becomes an issue when you're wanting to learn other techniques such as two brush blending, wet blending, loaded brush, and even feathering. For these techniques, you need a thicker paint. But with feathering, what you're doing is actually putting paint on the miniature, quickly voiding your brush, and then putting your clean brush over that surface and peeling it off slowly. This paint dries so incredibly fast that you cannot effectively use that technique. For the range of colors on this set, overall, I was quite impressed, uh, especially with their addition of the bone color. That was a great addition, way to go Reaper. There's a gray in here and I kind of wish it was an orange because there's no orange, but I'm just kind of nitpicking there. Um, but the metallics, and this is not so much an issue with the fact that there are metallics in this set, it's that they were so bad. I had so much trouble. If I were to say the single thing that I had the most trouble with shooting this entire video and painting those five minis were those two metallics. Their coverage is terrible. The pigment count is so low. I just struggled and I think the average painter would be like, oh my gosh, all my swords and armor look like garbage. What am I doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong. It's just bad paint. Final recommendation. I love this carrying case that this paint comes in. Plastic, it's got sweet foam on the inside. It can fit up to like 40 some paints. Really, really handy for mobile painting. But that's where the fun ends. Half of the paints in this set, I kind of love. Like they're great. Yeah, you can't, they're kind of thin, but most of the time that's fine. It's the other half. That half, I would love to crucify, light the cross on fire, and piss on the ashes. You can't say that. So whereas I can't recommend this specific set, I really only can't recommend it because of the HD colors. I think they have other sets that don't include the HD colors and just have like the Reaper bones or your standard Reaper paints. And I would recommend those, not having tested them, but based on my experience with Reaper and the testing of this set, I, I think that it's a great deal. Those HD colors, I just feel it's gonna be a big problem for a new painter. Last but not least, we have Scale 75 and their Smog Writers Starter Set. Coming in at $51, this set includes 10 paints, one ink, a fairly decent brush, and a mini. Now, you may be saying, I don't wanna spend this extra money for a mini because it's a chibi, um, but note that due to the cost of Scale 75 paints in general, you're not actually paying extra for the mini in this set. It's kind of just thrown in there to practice on. So it's up to you if you think it's worth it. So for ease of use, undoubtedly you've heard of this paint brand before in that it is some magical potion used by all the pigment wizards of our generation. But I caution ye not to be foolhardy, for deep within the depths of the ocean you will find monsters when searching for this buried treasure. You see, Scale 75 uses a gel medium. It's incredibly, incredibly thick, and it acts almost gooey and sticky directly out of the pot. Now, it can be thinned down 
immensely. In fact, it breaks at such an incomprehensible level that you can have your paint almost pigment free and still not see the actual separation between pigment and medium. It's very, very impressive. But learning the scale between thickest and thinnest takes a lot of practice, a lot of time, and a lot of really learning the feel of paint. And that is something that comes with a lot of experience. So for a new painter, this paint will be an incredible uphill battle just to accomplish your basic task of getting paint on mini. For flow, once you get your thinning down with this paint, its flow is amazing. If you don't thin it down enough, it's a blobby mess. If you thin it down too much, you've just created a four week base coat project. So it's tough to get there, but in the right zone, it is amazing. In terms of opacity, this paint covers extremely well in few coats once you get the dilution correct and it holds its vibrancy incredibly well. So now on to finish and this is the other main difference of this paint. This paint is incredibly matte. With this paint, you have full control over light. Even under a very, very vibrant light, this paint will hold its ground and say, not today, sir, not today because you are the master of your highlights and your shadows. This is a good thing if you're good at that. But as a new painter, this paint will show your every flaw and that matte paint can make highlights look very chalky if you're not experienced. In terms of thickness, as the great Freddie Mercury once sing sang sung, fat bottom girls, you make the rockin' world go round. And this paint is as thick as the muse of that song. It is a wet blender's dream and can be thinned down to the most subtle of featherings. For range of colors, they really do a good job of giving us a solid range in this set. Uh, vibrant tones all across the board. They don't include a purple, which is a bit of a bummer, but I did mix the red and blue together to get a nice vibrant purple quite easily. So that can be forgiven. They don't include the metallics from Scale 75, which I must say are my favorite metallics across all brands. So I would have wished that they would have given a new painter experience with those metallics. So final recommendation on Scale 75. Um, this one's a hard one. And I put a lot of thought into whether I would recommend this set for a beginner or not. And there's two sides of this fence. On one side, when you're a beginning painter, the most important thing is to build some momentum, build some pride by showing a final product and wanting to keep at it. That consistency is what keeps us in this hobby. And this paint could really break your spirit. It damn near broke mine and that was after having been painting for a while. But on the other hand, what if you started with this paint? What if you knew no different and you learned how to manipulate this paint? Maybe it would take away all that rough time because you had nothing to compare it to. It was simply all you knew. So at the end of the day, I can't tell which is right for each person. All I can say is be warned, it may be a little bit steeper hill to climb. So before I share my winner for this paint set competition, I wanna go over a couple things that I learned. Number one, many painting companies still cannot create a decent human flesh tone. And two, more importantly, that working with a limited paint palette was liberating. Oftentimes, six, seven, eight colors was plenty. I didn't find myself sucked into looking through hundreds of paints or wishing I had a color that I didn't. I made it work and I was able to freely make better choices. So who wins? I'll say it's not such a simple question to answer really. Each of these paint sets have their pros and cons. And if you own any of them or plan on buying one tomorrow or get one for Christmas, it's not a bad purchase. As long as you use them on a regular basis, uh, you enjoy them, and you feel like you're getting better each time you paint, it's a sound investment. But yeah, the winner is totally Vallejo. I mean, it's not even close. The amount of paint you get for the money, the great range of colors, including high quality metallics, the fact that they're easy to use for beginners and capable of the most difficult mini painting techniques, they can be thinned down and they don't get grainy or separated, and that they offer great coverage are some of the major reasons why they are leaving today with the belt. Oh, and they make you buff. Thanks for helping produce a video on my channel, John. I know it's quite labor intensive to have to meet all my chart 
requirements, but I'm glad that you did it. If you guys want to purchase one of the paint sets that John reviewed in the course of this video, including the one that he recommends, which is the Vallejo set, you can find affiliate links to them in the description below. When you purchase using these links, I get a little extra support and no extra cost to you, and it means a lot to receive your support in this way. As John mentioned, if you want to win one of his cultists that he painted, all you got to do is comment below about which set that you like the most, and I'll send one of those cultists off to one person each. If you guys like videos like this where I pit products head to head in a comparison, I have two more videos that you can check out about primers and also paint brushes. And to round out the rest of November, we're gonna do airbrushes next week. You can find those things linked in the top right hand corner in a playlist. If you like the channel and you wanna support it, I have a Patreon account with a bunch of fun rewards. I have a merchandise store where I'll say things like cutting mats and patches and also coffee mugs, which you can also find linked down in the description. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to paint my minis! Hey, that ain't Miniac. This is fake news. Uh. Arms for the poor. <laughs> as long as you spend time with them, uh, spend time with them just sounds so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you spend time with them, <laughs> I'd purchase. If I just f***ing have it in my head now, spend time with them. As long as you spend time with them, f*** me. <laughs> just like my brain just completely just goes. <laughs> that doesn't have anything to do with anything. We're wasting right. digital space here, John. <laughs> Burn the cross on fire. That's right. Burn it on <laughs> fire. <laughs> There's 75. Ooh, scares. 75. Scares. 75. <laughs> <laughs>